Ed DeRosa with you at Horse Racing Nation, joined by Nick Tamaro, who will be on the mic, as he has been for the past month at Sam Houston. But the good news is now everyone will get to hear and watch, and most importantly, wager on the great product at the Houston area racetrack. Nick, welcome, and in a sense, welcome back. Thanks so much. I promise we've been racing. <laughs> it's uh, it's It's been a, quite an odd month, but... Hey, we turned the calendar to February and good things happened right away. Love it. Uh, yes, you have been racing. Uh, you had your big weekend last week. Uh, unfortunately, missed that from an export perspective, uh, but heard uh, Jake on uh, Jason Beam podcast. And uh, I was actually at Oaklawn and Mary Rampolini was paying attention. Sounded like a good day with a good crowd. So good to get some some momentum as it were heading into the export portion of the, the meet. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we had a we had a very good day from an on track perspective, but you know, to uh, to put it in dollars and cents, you know, Sam Houston has gone from being about a high six figure, low seven figure export signal to a uh, probably one point eight, one point nine million consistently on a on a daily basis. And when you take that out of the equation, I mean, not only does it drastically affect the liquidity in the pools for everybody who still wants to get involved, but, you know, there's real revenue there that, that the racetrack garners from it. And while we do get a, a much smaller share of export handle, it's still a pretty significant amount. So uh, it would have been great to have everybody on board, of course, for last week's uh, Houston Racing Festival. We had a really good card, but we've still got a couple of big days left. And, uh, and we just really appreciate the overall support that we've gotten from the public. You've been a big advocate of ours for years. So um, we really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to getting everybody back in the pools. Well, and based on the uh, social media, A, when it wasn't an option and B, now that people actually have it to look forward to, definitely seems like the pent up demand is there and, and hopefully we'll get satisfied this weekend. Most people are used to Sam Houston being a nighttime track. They are daytime for the time being. Uh, and it sounded like from the statement, I forget if it was Frank or maybe Chris or PNG who, but or maybe you actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it sounds like that'll be considered going forward. But for this initial weekend of export, it's still an afternoon post time. Is that correct? Yeah, I think we're going to have an update on post times uh, later this week, early next week. I think trying to weigh all the factors in, of course, you know, look, my 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 opinion on it personally, and I don't make the decisions if your racetrack has lights and it was installed with lights, you're a night track. <laughs> and uh, so we've, we've been, you know, we've been successful at night. Um, obviously the lack of the export, the ability to export the signal at the outside of the meet prompted a, a post time change. We've seen a, a pretty good response from the people in the Houston area, as far as on track restaurants and, uh, and suites and things like that. So what you're trying to, to balance out is making sure that everybody that you're bringing to the facility is accommodated uh, properly because they're expecting an afternoon card while also finding your, your niche in the simulcast marketplace. And obviously there's a lot less competition at night. And so, right. you know, with all due respect to our sister properties in Charlestown and Penn national, and of course uh, at Turfway, which is an outstanding product um, that's not aqueduct Gulfstream. Oaklawn, Fairgrounds, Santa Anita, Turf, uh, uh, Tampa Bay Downs. So you just got to find where you fit. And, and I think we'll have some updates on that moving forward. But uh, it is definitely a welcome change to see the complaints go from, boy, we wish we could bet to, hey, we want to tell you what time you should run. Why aren't you at night? Indeed. Uh, we mentioned weighing factors, which, of course, is what handicappers do. And was really curious to, to pick your brain. You let us off by saying, hey, we have been racing. So we are going to have some local PPs to deal with. Uh, what can you get us up to speed on uh, in terms of whether it's track playing, hot jocks, trainers, anything that's caught your eye the first month that wouldn't have caught ours? I'll tell you what, uh, you know, generally by this point in the meet, Steve Asmussen has taken the lead in the trainer standings. He's won 14 straight training titles at Sam Houston. He's been a little cold, a little slower than he would normally start. J.R. Caldwell has been absolutely on fire and his barn has really gotten uh, really improved significantly in the last three to four years. He also as he told uh, Martha Clausen on track at the beginning of last year's meet, he's really taking his entire stable around the midpoint of Remington and getting it prepped for Sam Houston. Um, of course, with all of his Texas breads, it, it's a much better <laughs> fit, uh, obviously. So he's gotten off to an incredible start. I believe he has 11 wins. Lane Luzzi is leading the jockey standings in large part because he is JR's uh, first call rider. 
So that they've been kind of the standout so far in terms of the uh, the human uh, interests. The track itself, I felt like, has been pretty fair. We've had very little weather. In fact, the worst weather we had all meet was actually on Saturday for the Houston Racing Festival. And, and we we ran on a turf course that was rated something other than firm, which is very, very rare. But um, we've had a lot of, of, of uh, fast tracks. And I think, if anything, my experience with the Sam Houston surface last year, calling the races full time for the first time was that if anything, I feel like our rail can get off a little bit at times and an opening weekend, it felt like there were a couple of rails that maybe weren't ideal. Few horses ducked down to the inside and kind of spun their wheels a little bit, but there has not been a noticeable bias at all. And uh, the turf, we started at 30 feet the first two weeks, worked our way down to 18 for week number three. We went to zero last week. We only ran two races on it. On a Saturday, we ran three on Friday, and um, obviously at the true rail setting, you get a we, we have, you know we have a beautiful turf course, and it's in much much better shape than it was last year in large part because the weather has been far more conducive to uh, grass really taking root in the winter time. So we're going to stay at zero this week. We'll work our way back out before going to zero for Texas preview. So it's uh, a good opportunity for everybody to get back in. And of course, Texas helped us in years in recent years with the. Uh, horse industry escrow account that accounts for about 50% of the purse fund. So that's really needed. And, and it, it, it helps us create a product that's not only uh, competitive, but also very bettable. And I will say it also contributes to the marketing funds, which uh, is much appreciated, not only by Horse Racing Nation, but all the trades. And uh, I think it's great that uh, a regulatory body that you know knew that this money makes sense to invest in racing also said, well, can't all go to purses. You need to, uh, you know, promote your product as well. And uh, it's been a great partnership, both with Sam Houston and Lone Star. So hopefully it continues a little, little hiccup with not being able to export for a month, but you're back. People are excited. Can't believe we've made it this far without once mentioning the 12% takeout, which Sam Houston did not budge on despite the challenges of the first month. And now they uh, hopefully get to reap the rewards of people being excited to bet into those uh, multi-race low takeout pools. Have you noticed any style of race or, you know, when, when looking for that separator race, uh, is any caught your eye this meet so far? Or, man, th these always seem to blow up or chalks are vulnerable when people bet this type of race. Uh, any guidance there? I think you want to be careful with some of the claiming races that the public will gravitate to Asmussen and Broberg pretty readily. I think that's part of the reason why J.R. Caldwell has been kind of a surprise so far in that the, you know, the big guys aren't winning at as high a, a clip as they normally do. Broberg's five for 32 at the meet. Asmussen is six for 52. So, you know, it, Asmussen, of course, is liable to go on a, a four for eight <laughs> run and, and, you know, completely destroy everything I've just said. But at least at this point, I think you want to, you want to be careful about just defaulting to, uh, to those guys in some of the claiming races. Brett Calhoun is a much bigger, presence now than he was probably five years ago, um, given that the purses really are, are, are a lot more uh, geared towards his type of stable. And he's eight for 33 at the meet. He started nothing but live horses. He uses Jose Alvarez, who's a good rider that really rides both the turf and dirt very well. Um, and so I, I would definitely keep an eye on anything that he has. He's going to be a little bit more made in special weight and allowance heavy because um, he'll send some of his better, better stock over to Sam Houston now with the better purse structure. So I would say, uh, you know, one thing I've noticed about sprint races at Sam Houston, the elongated sprints, the six and a halfs and sevens, they're very open to speed horses. So I think if, if you have a speed horse that can get out and, and establish themselves, I don't mind betting speed at seven furlongs. I think a lot of times you can, you can kind of really drag your rivals into a situation where they have to go faster early than they'd prefer. So don't be too hesitant on that at all. All right. That's a uh, good advice. And Sam Houston does have a, a ton of options for distances. I think they run five and a half to seven. And then obviously the route races, plenty of turf options with the shoot. So a lot of variables uh, and with that 12% takeout, a lot of opportunity for betters as well. Nick, really appreciate your time. Uh, I know it's, it's busy, but I, I know you're as excited as the betters are to, to be back on uh, all the platforms and in the simulcast centers. No doubt about it. Great to have all of you back. And again, those 12% takeout bets, every multi-race bet. We'll do uh, the 50 cent late pick five on uh, the last five races. And we've got a couple of pick fours and, you know, you you can speak from experience. I mean, the, the, the benefit of having that low takeout in those wagers is just, it's enormous. No. Yeah. It's huge. Uh, I mean, 
the, the way I always look at it is 12% takeout means a bet that in New York or California that would pay $76 pays 88 at Sam Houston. And, uh, you know, when you think about bets that maybe pay 10 or a hundred times more than that, uh, that's significant money. So no uh, doubt. Encourage, encourage people to, to dip in. Uh, you've seen Nick uh, handicapping the expert picks on twin spires. Now you'll get to hear him as they finally bring back Sam Houston, along with all your other ADWs or simulcast centers, Vegas, perhaps, uh, we're all excited, Nick, and uh, looking forward to hearing you tomorrow. Very much so. Thanks so much. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. All right. He's Nick tomorrow. I'm Ed DeRosa. Sam Houston Race Park back wherever you make wagers this weekend, Friday through Sunday. Good luck.